On today's Toy Spot, we're having a look at the Mattel DC Universe Wave 18. This is figure six. We're looking today at Bronze Tiger. Bronze Tiger not only features the tiger head that you can see on him currently, but he does also include an extra head of Ben Turner. This is figure six. This also does include the other leg to Apache Chief. So if you've been following along, Spot, where's that other leg? This one right here has the other leg. Turn around the package on the back side here. The interesting picture of Bronze Tiger and the biography Ben Turner sought to tame the willed wildness within himself by mastering martial arts. Brainwashed by the evil League of Assassins, he donned a tiger mask and became the infamous Bronze Tiger. Turner was eventually deprogrammed by Amanda Waller and joined the Suicide Squad. Often defying orders and rescuing teammates deemed expendable by Waller, he is a noble man working alongside murderers forever haunted by his past misdeeds. First appearance, Richard Dragon Kung Fu Fighter No. 1, April to May 1975. Real name, Benjamin Turner. Occupation, government agent, base of operations, Bell Reeve Prison. Special abilities, his martial arts skills make him one of the top ten fighters on Earth. And again, you can collect all six figures to build yourself an Apache chief. Uh, what I am going to do is take a bit of a break. I'm going to get this opened up. And when we come back, we're going to get a better look at Bronze Tiger. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. And your collect and connect piece for Apache Chief is the other leg. We get ourselves the right leg of Apache Chief. Let's bring in where we have left him off so far. Um, as a side note, I noticed that the left leg is a little loose in the ankle area. The right leg does not seem to have that problem. Oh shucks. We're going to take the right leg. We're going to peg it into place. Hopefully as easy as the left leg was. Snap it in place. That snap means it went through and it went all right. And uh, we've got ourselves now two pieces away from finishing Apache Chief. Let's move him away. Let's have a look now at Bronze Tiger. He's interesting, and he is definitely interesting to say the least. And really, uh, Spot would want to apologize, because I think before I had mentioned that this is a heavily superpowered friend uh, Lee, uh, wave, except for, I think, I think I mentioned um, Captain Boomerang. I really should have mentioned Bronze Tiger, too, in the fact that he's not really a Super Friends-inspired uh, figure either. Um, I guess let's just get it out of the way. Let's have a look at his head. Yeah. He's got himself a tiger mask. It looks a little more like a real tiger head and less a tiger mask. It looks like he's slaughtered some poor tiger and put his head on his neck, but I don't know. I, it's not bad. I don't think kids out there would have frosted flakes if Tony the Tiger looked like this. Come follow your nose. Actually, no, that he says, they're great. For a second, I was going to say, come follow your nose. That's Toucan Sam. Um, the detail on the mask, if you can call it again a mask, is really nice. It's maybe a little over top for me to be putting him on display with this head on. It kind of seems very jarring to compare to the rest of the body. But I guess having looked at the source material, the mask is appropriate. Just not really my thing. But uh, I do have to definitely say kudos to Mattel for uh, for sculpting, um, you know, such a really really nicely detailed mask. I guess the Four Horsemen for doing such a really nice detailed mask. Um, I am curious as to know how many people would likely display him with this mask, uh, or we'll just take the head off gingerly, gingerly. There we go pop the head off. I'm always worried about these little pegs because sometimes they can get really, really fragile. See, there's the peg right there, the ball joint. And uh, let's put on the alternate head here. And uh, I think that looks a little nicer. I don't know. I, I think that looks a little nicer. It looks a little more toned down. The face, very, uh, very nice. 
I also like the yellow that they put on there as well. It kind of looks like the John Stewart figure that was released in the Green Lantern six pack, um, but this that it does look like this would be a different head sculpt. But I think really a, a far superior uh, head sculpt, and I really prefer this one over the tiger. I think the tiger is just kind of, I think it's along the lines of what was that shark, the shark DC Universe figure it was a killer shark or shark I can't remember his name. He, so forgettable of a character, but uh, the helmet or the mask here, I think is along those same lines. It's a little too silly to have on a toy shelf with this head, unless you grew up and you've followed it along in the comics and you know him so well. I don't know so very little about Bronze Tiger, but um, if you knew him well enough and you liked him with the mask, I would say, you know, keep the mask on, but I'm likely to keep him, keep this alternate head on instead. As for the rest of the body, I really think they did a good job. Um, this orange works really, really well. And then you've kind of got this darker, almost kind of, what do you want to call it? Like an auburn orange, like a darker orange, um, kind of uh, tiger print going on there as well. It works all the way down the front and then also on the sides of his gloves or on top of his gloves there. A little bit going on on the back too. Um, his color scheme is pretty much just the orange, that little kind of reddish orange and then the yellow. Um, outlined in black. I think as a whole it works really really well and the char character stands out. Um, I think majority wise of the of this line he's probably the more uh, bold character. I mean Samurai too he's pretty good too. So for, was it Samurai? Yeah Samurai. I just had to look off camera. I, think, I thought his name was something else but um, yeah I, I really think this, this has done a, a really well done figure. But again, the biggest problem with this line as a whole is the fact that it's made up of so many characters that probably nobody has heard of. Captain Boomerang, yes, you could probably have heard of him. Even if you didn't follow the comics, you probably follow the cartoons. Or if you know Flash, you probably know Captain Boomerang. Toy Man, again, similar idea. Toy Man, a little different in the Superman animated series. But, you know, probably a fan favorite being that a lot of people ch grew up with Challenge of the Super Friends. When it comes to characters like this, and even like El Dorado, probably not a lot of people have heard of him. And therefore, characters and figures like this probably would not have sold. Which is a bit of a shame because this you can see that there's a lot of work that was put into it. And the payoff, sadly, probably isn't there for a lot of uh, collectors. Bronze Tiger, on the other hand, uh, also does come with a lot of accessories, uh, some of which I'm pretty sure have made their debut before. Uh, for starters, he does come with a sword, which may have come with Deathstroke. Memory serves me. He does also come with a staff, which I also think came with Deathstroke. And he also, these probably look the most recognizable. These also were available with Nightwing, and these would be his small excuse spot for not knowing the actual term, but the small baton style uh, weapons as well. So if you lost Nightwings, hey, hey right there fella, you've got two extras. So I like that. Um, not again, really knowing what Bronze Tiger would have used a lot in the comics, um, you know, that your choice is yours as to really how you want to display him, whether you want to have to display him with the, the staff, with the sword. I mean, he does definitely have enough accessories that, uh, you know, to not only accessorize him, but also use these accessories for other characters. This could be ideal for a Wonder Woman and whatnot. Um, that's also a nice little added bonus, too. In the way of his articulation, Bronze Tiger has a nice, fairly easy to move. Turn it all the way around, you'll kill him. Uh, ball jointed head, standard pin and socket shoulders, rotation in the bicep. Again, that single bend in the elbow, rotation in the hand, the upper torso bend, which at least is nice and stiff on this character, on this figure. Um, he would have normally a waist swivel, but I guess because this extra piece of his uh, kimono uh, is in the way, you're not gonna be able to turn it. Uh, legs again go forward and back out, rotation in thigh, bend at the knee, hinged foot. Um, again, 
a mixed bag. I mean, you likely would either collect this character because of the same two reasons as I mentioned before, because you are collecting a Apache Chief that you feel like you need to collect, of course, all the figures to get him, um, or you grew up with the character, you followed Bronze Tiger, and you want to get the figure. If you don't have those two reasons or either one of those reasons to collect this figure, you likely could have passed. And I think that's likely what has happened with a lot of the characters from DC Universe Wave 18. Bronze Tiger, though, well executed, paints really good, sculpt as a whole is done really well. I'm going to give Bronze Tiger, though, an 8. Today's Toy Spot, we're having a look at the DC Universe Wave 18. We're looking today at Bronze Tiger. Thanks for watching, as you always do, guys. And as you know, we are now two figures away from finishing Apache Chief, so those reviews are on their way. See you guys next time.